There was a time when you was right to come for me, Senor Macho. But this time, no. Do not arrest me. You make one move and I kill you. Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp, starring Hugh O'Brien. For the most part, law enforcement in the West was pretty open and uncomplicated. With a gun at his hip, every man was a potential criminal. But a good peace officer like Wyatt Earp could usually tell who were the troublemakers. But sometimes appearances deceived even Wyatt. Howdy, Ed. Howdy, Wyatt. You come to meet the stage? No, oh, I'm just making the rounds, talking to some of the boys. Thought maybe you heard about the shipment coming in. Oh, valuable? Five thousand. New silver dollars direct from the San Francisco Mint. I think I'll stick around. Here it comes now. Hey, yeah, it's running loose. Billy still alive? Yeah, but he's hurt pretty bad. A couple of you men, get him over to Doc McCarty's, quick. Come on. Run, tell Miss Nancy. Miss Nancy? The school teacher? She and Billy Hanley are engaged to be married. Supposed to be a passenger. He's dead. They get it all. I can't figure why they'd do a thing like that. Just shoot down an innocent passenger. Yeah, he wasn't even wearing a gun. And why did Billy have the boxes inside instead of in the booth? They're heavy. Maybe too heavy to lift up there. Yeah. What do you think, what? There's no use wondering about him. Wait until we can talk to Billy. But if we can't, if Doc can't save him. Yeah, we'll have to find out some other way. Marshal, how is he? he isn't... No, ma'am. No, the doc says he's got a good chance. Oh, where can I see him? Well, I think we better wait until the doc comes out. He's in there with Billy now. Oh, yes, of course. D -d Does anyone know how, why it happened? You know, why is easy. There was $5,000 on that stage. Oh, I knew something like this would happen. Doctor. Calm down, Miss Nancy. He's going to be as good as new. Oh, can I see him? Oh, only for a minute. We mustn't tire him. Well, I better go in first. You? Well, I got some questions I want to ask him that are important. That is, if you want me to catch you ever shot him. Oh, oh yes, of course, Marshal. But couldn't I go in with you? I, I wouldn't interfere with your questions, I assure you. And I could look at him. All right. Oh, Billy, darling. Don't. Careful, Miss Nancy. That wound's painful. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Marshal. I'll make it brief, Billy. Did you see who did it? Yes. It was... three men. Did you recognize them? That's why they shot me. They were wearing masks. But one of them was... Esteban Marengo. How do you know for sure? He had an accent. He looked Mexican. Besides, I saw Esteban back at the relay station at Rock Springs. Him and two other men. They were the same men. There, Marshal. What more do you need? Billy, if they were wearing masks, how did they know you recognized them? Why did they shoot you and the passenger? Well, so as to take no chances, I guess. Where did they stop you? Sandy Crossing. Your horses ran loose all that way? I drove them part of the way. And I passed out, I guess. 
Marshal, do you have to ask all these questions? I'll talk to you later. Marshal, can I have my gun? Why? Oh, they tried to kill me once. Here? Oh, I don't think so, Billy. Billy, they'd never try it here. Besides, there's no need now. No need? The Marshal knows all you can tell him. They'd never try to kill you now. Oh, you have nothing to worry about. Dr. McCarty and I will stay here with you and take care of you while, while the Marshal goes out after the man who shot you. Who is he, Marshal? Mr. Von Marengo. He's a Mexican that's been around here for a while working on freighters in and out of trouble. Well, he's in real trouble now. I have to catch him first. Well, buenos dias, senorita. Como esta? Bien. We're close here. Close? Looks like I'm just in time for dinner. I did not expect customers. There's not enough. No. Where's the stage man? Quien sabe? The stage is not due until tomorrow. And you're all alone? Who's the other dinner for? It is none of your business, Senor Marshal. Might be. Uh, do you know a man by the name of Esteban Morengo? Do you? No. Has he ever been here? How do I know if I don't know him? This afternoon when the stage came in, was there a Mexican man here? No. There's none here now. You always eat two plates of enchiladas? See, si, when I am hungry. Andale, andale, es la policía, vete. No, I do not go. Oh, por favor. Be quiet. I do not run away from the policía. Tell me, Senor Marshal, what do you want with me? I want to take you into Dodge City for some questioning. <laughs> I know about questioning. I don't know you take me to Dodge. You've been identified as one of three men who robbed a stage and killed a man. Who say this? Stage driver, Billy Hanley. He lies. See, he lies. Would I be here sitting down to eat if I robbed the stage? No, I'd be on my way to Mexico. There was time, Senor Marshal, when you was right to come for me. But this time, no, you do not arrest me. You make one move and I kill you. Were you here when the stage came through? See, si, why not? Were two other men here? Uh, Senor Cassidy and his brother. Sam Cassidy? He has a ranch near here. Yeah, I know. South. Senor Marshal, I tell the truth. I do not rob this stage. Billy lies. Well, maybe Billy made a mistake. What'd you do after the stage left? Nothing. See, si, you fix wagon for Senor Cassidy. Oh, see. Si. His axle was broke. Well, that must have taken a while, hmm? Maybe two, three hours. Esteban, you have an alibi. Now, you willing to ride down to Cassidy's ranch with me and verify it? See, si, but not to dodge. No, not if it checks out. Come on. Quiet, quiet. Somebody shot Billy. He's dead. We should have listened to him. He was scared. And there was something he wanted to do. I went out a few minutes and left him with Miss Nancy. They must have been watching outside that window. Oh, if only I turned around. I thought I heard something. Now, Miss Nancy, you mustn't blame yourself. You nearly got shot as it was. Bullet nicked the sleeve of her dress. She was sitting right close there beside him. I'm sorry, Miss Nancy. Oh, he tried to tell us. But I suppose you had no more reason to believe him than we did. I looked outside why I had no footprints. The ground's too hard, but I did find this little cartridge show. 41 Derringer. It was a Derringer that killed the passenger, too. And got Billy the first time. Same gun, probably. Oh, M M Marshal, you, you've got to get that man. He must be dangerous to do a thing so terrible. I never did like that, Esteban Marengo. It wasn't Esteban. He was with me when it happened. Then his Confederates. He had no Confederates. He had nothing to do with the robbery or this. No, either Billy was mistaken or... What? Or Billy sent me out there in a wild goose chase. Why? You, you can't think Billy had anything to do with the robbery. He might have. If he lied, he must have. 
You, you mean he sent you out there in a wild goose chase so he could be shot and killed? That's true, Wyatt. Well, that point's a puzzle. But suppose he had been double-crossed by his pals. He might still have hoped to get part of that loot somehow. Oh, you know he wasn't that kind of a man. No, why would Billy want to hold up a stagecoach? Well, he wasn't rich. He was about to get married. $5,000 would have set him up for life. How can you cast such a stigma on the memory of a dear dead boy who can't defend himself? Miss Nancy, a crime has been committed. I've got to get at the facts. Whatever they are, whoever they hurt. Now, they might implicate Billy, but on the other hand, they may clear him, too. I hope before you cast public suspicion on him, you get positive proof. That's my job, Miss Nancy. <laughs> Howdy, Miss Nancy. Marshal. What are you doing out here? That's my usual way home from school. Well, then you've decided to stay here and dodge after all, huh? No, I couldn't. There are too many memories. I understand. Have you found anything out yet, Marshal? No. Didn't find anything at Sandy Crossing. Didn't even find a sign that the stage had stopped there. Maybe you were too hasty in eliminating the Mexican. No, I don't think so. Do you, uh, come by here about the same time every afternoon? Yes. Sometime you see the stage? Yes, sometimes. You didn't see it the other afternoon? No, no. It was either a little early or a little late. I don't know which. Billy would always wave. And... I'm sorry. I have to ask questions because I don't have any clues. I'm up a blind alley. Yes, I'm sorry, too, Marshal. San Francisco. I tell you, Billy's record was perfect. I'd have trusted him with my life. Especially when he got engaged to Miss Nancy. She's perfect. <laughs> you sound like you were in love with her yourself. Well, every man in town is a little. She's such a sweet, pretty little thing. Like today, a pathetic thing. What? That package came for her on the stage from San Francisco. Got damaged a little and you can see what it is. New dress. Part of a wedding thing, I suppose. Oh. Looks expensive, but since when do they start wearing black wedding dresses with spangles? Probably for parties when they went back east. Who knows? Anyways, I... I just can't bring myself to deliver it to her. Well, I'll take it to her. I want to ask her some questions anyway. Oh? About Billy? Yeah. Well, I'd be obliged to you if you would take it. But there's two dollars extra express charges due on it. You want to collect it? Well, I, uh... Well, never mind. I'll, I'll waive it. It's the least I can do for her. See you later. Marshal, come in. Thank you. There's one Billy left here. He was very proud of his whips. He made them himself. What brings you here, Marshal? Well, I, uh, his package came for you today from San Francisco. I 
happened to be over at the express company. He was coming out here anyway. It's quite a fancy dress. It was intended for my trousseau. I won't need it now. Aren't you going to open it? Not right now. If it's damaged, the express company would like to know about it. I'll let them know if it is. I thought women were supposed to be curious. I'm not. Why are you? Well, that dress doesn't look much like uh, little Miss Nancy, school teacher. It wasn't intended to. It was for my honeymoon, for my husband. That's why I don't want to open it now. I'd like to know, Marshal, what it is you're thinking, what you're insinuating. Nothing, Miss Nancy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. But you have. And I, I, I don't understand why. First you suspect Billy, and now, and now it seems me of what I don't know. It's only that I'm trying to find any kind of a clue. Anything that would seem strange. Well, I don't see how my buying a new dress, especially since it was bought weeks ago for my trousseau, could seem strange. No, I guess not. Now, please, go. Oh, wait. There's money due on this. I'll, I'll get it for you. It's not necessary. I always pay my debts. Here. I'm sorry. What? You delivered? Yeah. She took it pretty hard, huh? I was afraid she would. Well, I guess I uh, wasn't as diplomatic as I could have been. I wouldn't have been either. You asked for it. But thanks. Uh, wait a minute, she <clears throat> paid me the express due. Here. Hey, wait a minute. Let me see that. These are shiny new. Yeah. They're dated this year. It must have been put in circulation just in the last couple of weeks. Why? It, this is part of the loot? It must be. But how did Miss Nancy come to have them? That's what I'd like to know. She must have gotten them from the robbers somehow. Either that or she and Billy. Oh, Wyatt, I can't believe that. But it's possible. Well, that would mean that she killed Billy. Well, she could have. She could have gone outside, shot him through the window. Back inside before the doc got there. But the, the, the bullet tear in her sleeve. Well, she could have done that herself. We didn't look at it too closely, you know. Oh, Wyatt. It's also possible that she came by these coins honestly. It's been three days since the holdup. Yeah. It's possible. But I'm going to have to find out. <laughs> I didn't know you were in the habit of breaking in on a lady's privacy. I see you changed your mind about wearing the dress. Yes. How do I look? Well, different anyway. More like I belong south of the deadline in one of those dance halls? Go on, Marshal. You can say yes. I won't be insulted. I'll be complimented. Because I'm a woman, just like them. And I like everything about being a woman. And I'm sick to death of playing the prim little paragon of virtue. Do you know what it's like to be a school teacher? Why don't you say something? Aren't you shocked? No. I'm just surprised that you forgot Billy so soon. This has nothing to do with Billy. 
You said yourself no woman can resist a new dress. Well, that's not the kind of a dress that a husband usually approves of, even on a honeymoon. Of course, maybe you never even planned to go on a honeymoon. What do you mean? You gave me this uh, a little while ago. It's brand new, shiny. Where'd you get it? I don't know. Why? Because it's part of the money that was stolen off the stage. How do you know that? I know. That's enough. Now, where'd you get it? Well, of course, I, I, I got it from the collection. The, the, the collection they took up to help with Billy's funeral expenses. Now, I'll tell you a story. You and Billy planned that hold up together. You met him out there on the road with your buckboard. And Billy pulled the stage up. One of you killed the passenger before he knew what was happening, so he couldn't identify you. Billy helped transfer the money over to the buckboard. Then you had no more use for Billy. If he had shot straight, he might never have been found out. You're mad. Don't you think Billy would have told you in the doctor's office if I'd shot him? He was almost scared enough. But he must have had a reason not to. Maybe he thought he still might get part of the loot. Or maybe he was really in love with you. Wouldn't have turned you in if it meant his death. At any rate, it did mean his death. I suppose I did that? Yes. He acted loving and remorseful until he was low to sleep. And then you went outside and shot him through the window and came back before the doctor. Oh, it's preposterous. Well, like I say, it's just a story. Now, which one do you want to believe? You could never prove yours in a million years. I could if I could find 5,000 more of these around your house here someplace. I think I can. Because I don't think you ever thought that you'd ever be under suspicion. Why, look at me. Am I pretty? Well, am I? Yes. Listen to me, Wyatt. I never loved Billy. He was just a kid. But you're a man, and I've always admired you. If your story was true, if I did have that money, you and I could go a long way together. Go back East Europe, maybe. We'd have a lot of fun. Could be heaven, why? Miss Nancy, you already have a date with the jury. I think we better go. In this dress? Does it matter? Yes. Do you think I'd stand a chance with your good folks if they saw me in this? Let me change. Don't try to get away. You wouldn't make it. I won't. Don't worry. Don't turn around yet. A Derringer? Yes, the same one. Now put your hands up, please. It's kind of stupid of me to forget about it, wasn't it? It was careless. You gave me my life, and I appreciate it. I'm sorry I can't return the favor. I know you're very good with a gun, but mine's out, and you know I can use it. Yes, I know. So don't try to draw. Just turn around, slowly. Oh, aren't you going to shoot me in the back? wouldn't fit in with my story. And what will your story be? That I was about to retire. Heard an intruder. Shot before I saw it was you. No one will suspect, dear Miss Nancy. Everyone will sympathize. You're quite an actress, aren't you? I'll have to be a little while longer, but then I'll be gone with the money. And I won't have to pretend ever again. Now turn around slowly and keep your hands up. <laughs> You, I'm you... sorry. I hate to hurt a lady. Now, come on. Why, please! Look, if you wanted excitement and fun, you should have stuck to school teaching. It's a lot more exciting than where you're going to have to go. Prison. Come on. Well, 
he cleaned up the country, the old wild west country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told. Tecumseh Sherman, General of the Army, made his fame in the Civil War. But General Sherman also commanded the Army when it fought the Indian Wars and opened up the Western Frontier. In the period between 1866 and 1878, Uncle Billy paid a visit to every Western fort in every town of importance west of Kansas City. When word got out that General Sherman was on his way to Dodge to board the steam cars of the Santa Fe, Marshal Earp was soon up to his chin in trouble. Why, thank goodness you're here. Oh, honey, Mr. Bates, what's she so excited about? This telegram, it's confidential. Inside. General Sherman's coming. General Sherman's coming. They just got a telegram. It's General Sherman. General Sherman's coming. General Sherman's coming. He'll be here this afternoon. General Sherman! Ling Hanson, what are you yelling about? Let go, Sophie. I got big news. I've got even bigger news. You need a bath. You go straight home and take one. But General Sherman's coming to town. Oh. General Sherman here in Dodge. He'll be here this afternoon. General Sherman's coming. And not only that, a group of Eastern newspaper men just got off the train. Fellas from the New York Times and Herald and Chicago Tribune, Kansas City Star. And you know what the general thinks of newspaper men. And the Santa Fe is right in the middle. We can't afford to offend the newspapers, yet General Sherman is one of the best friends that the Western Roads has ever had. And all he wants to do is to get on the train here to go to Kansas City. Now, what am I going to do, Wyatt? Well, there's not much you can do. There are a lot of Texas cowhands in town. I'd sure hate to see a ruckus with a man like General Sherman here. He's in charge of the whole Western Army and the Indian fights. He certainly ought to be able to board a train here without getting into a lot of trouble. You don't think there'll be incidents? Now look at here, Wyatt. The Santa Fe can't afford to have demonstrations or disorders. Well, that won't be the half of it. What? Well, General Sherman has soldiers after Chief Joseph and the there's purses up north. In a couple of hours, Dodge City will be jumping with reports that the Indians are about to attack us. Oh, no. Uncle Billy Sherman is what the newspapers call a controversial character. Uh-oh. Now you're in for it. Oh, no. Not me. I'm going out the back way. If things get too rough, send word to me. I've got to make up the general's train. I'll be in the yards. Well, wasn't that Jim Bates? Uh, yes, sir, but, uh... I think your outfit scared him. Well, indeed, now. Well, I served under General Sherman. It's up to us to arrange a fitting welcome for the general. Yes. I've just now spoke to Chalk Beeson. He's going to call out the cowboy band. They'll play marching through Georgia as the general arrives. Then the judge and I and the wait city minute, council... Wait a, minute, wait a minute. The general doesn't like that song. I read in the papers where he stopped him from playing it in Omaha. We got a lot of southern sympathizers in this town, Judge. That's true, Wyatt. Whose side are you on? My father and two brothers fought for the Union, but that's not the point. Indeed, no. I think you and the judge ought to think about this a little bit more. And can you convince him to take this outfit off? Well, it does fit a mite snug in places. I'm proud to be wearing the blue. 
Well, I fought from Shiloh to Atlanta. You want a riot? And then I... Riot? Are you daft? I'm not telling you anything you don't know. This is not a northern town. It's a border town. He's right, Jim. Now, do you want this town disgraced with a lot of riots and brawls? Do you? So that's it, huh? I'm not allowed to make a speech about my great commander and general. Oh, no. Look, he doesn't want that kind of a speech. He's heard a thousand of them. Now, you listen to that boy, Jim. No, he won't listen to me. He's Irish and he's stubborn. I'm going to call out all my deputies. I'll probably need them. <laughs> oh, we're on a wild goose chase. Oh, no. I need a drink. On the Herald, of course. What makes you so sure old Kump won't show up? The Sherman's not that crazy. Your best bartender, all around. Chief Joseph's been making monkeys of his great General Howard. And as for Nelson Miles, I bet he's lost his whole command in the Badlands. You and the Herald have certainly made it rough on the Army, Wendell. Rough? Wait till you read my latest piece to Sherman and Sheridan. <sighs> Incompetent, both of them. Who's talking? What was that, sir? I asked who's talking, mister. You ever fought any Indians? That's a stupid and irrelevant question. You know, I don't think I like you. Oh. No way to settle difference. Stay out here. Pilot, Pilot! Now, who started this? I'm guilty, sir, and I confess to the strong arm of the law. <laughs> <laughs> and who are you? Oh, me? Haven't you ever heard of Two Gun Wendell of the New York Herald? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Murphy, I'm surprised at you. Don't you know we don't strike members of the newspaper profession? Well, I do. He had it coming to him. You should have heard what he said about General Sherman. I don't care what he said. No, we don't take pokes at newspaper men. Oh, they can hit us, but we dare not strike back. Oh, you never fight a newspaper unless you own one yourself. Well, a frontier Socrates. <laughs> Mind if I coach you in my paper? No, go ahead. And who are you? Yeah. I asked you your name. Take your hands off of me. All right, Hal, they're all under arrest. Put this one and this one in cells. Now get out of here. Oh, oh, no, 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 just a minute, gentlemen, just Why? a minute. Let me handle this. I, sir, am Arthur Ashburton of the New York Times. Yes, sir? I demand to know the reason for this procedure. I'm trying to keep you all alive until General Sherman gets here. Protective custody. Now, come on, get out of here. Oh, this is outrageous. Oh, no. I'll, get out of this. I'll take this to the Hell, I'll be over in the globe. Come here. Now, what were they saying about General Sherman? Are you arresting Mr. Murphy? No, oh, I'll just hold him for a while. Well, you must be on our side. I'm not on anybody's side. You don't like General Sherman? Well, I've never met the man, Link. Have you? No, sir. But I'm going to meet him today. Well, I think the general uh, is going to be a little bit busy. But Sophie said... Hey, Sophie! Hey, Sophie, you come here. You said I could shake hands with General Sherman. Hush, Link. I haven't seen Tom, not for weeks. He's up north with General Howard. She's sweet on old Tom. Shh. We're engaged, Marshal. And I was wondering if I could get close enough to General Sherman. I mean, just a word of news. Well, I'll see what I can do, Miss Sophie. Excuse me. When you stay here with your sister. You come back here. Hmm. Now remember, we are here to make converts before that man Sherman arrives. Ninety percent of the people believe as we do. They must be rallied to the cause. Rallied! Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Uh, just a minute, uh, folks. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to... Uh, Keep that sign out of view. Peace, young man. Well, I'm for that, but I don't think you're going to get much peace carrying that sign down Front Street. Very well. Arrest us. How many poor Indians have you murdered? Yes, how many? 
Well, very few men. Now, I'm giving you a police order to keep that sign out of public view. I don't want these women hurt. This town is full of tough men that like General Sherman. You put it away. Peace, friend. We will go inside and ask for guidance. Amen, brother. Amen. Paul. Amen. 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 And we're putting out an extra with an editorial asking all factions to stay calm. It's a bad situation, Marshal. Indian haters, Indian lovers, professional Johnny Rebs and Yankees. I'd rather have a regular tornado hit town. I don't suppose there's any way to detour the general. Hmm. Sherman, if he made up his mind to visit Hades, he'd cuss the devil right out of his path. Well, nothing much else can happen. Oh, yes, it can. Colonel Bankhead of the Blaze V Ranch checked in at the Texas house. Oh, no. Did he bring any gunslingers? I don't know. Well, I'll find out. Well, now, that looks better. Judge Tobin's waiting in your office. Sam, I thought the Globe would like my speech welcoming General Sherman. Of course, Jim. Have you checked with Wyatt? Indeed, no. Who's the mayor of Dodge City? Well, you still have a blue pencil, Jim. But uh, don't let the eagle scream too loud. Hmm? <laughs> I'll say to my old commander what's in my heart. Easy now, Jim. Pull up a chair and sit down and compose your eloquent thoughts. I've got to put an extra on the street. Now, here's the way we'll begin. And furthermore, I ask you, is there a stare decisis? Do the laws of Kansas oblige newspaper men from other states to submit to protective custody against their wills? No, Mr. Ashburton, but... Then I demand our immediate release. We are not children, sir. The New York Times... Oh, shut up, Artie. I will not shut up, and I will be heard. The New York Times is a great metropolitan newspaper. And I will not be detained at the whim of some pettifogging tyrant who lords it over this, this, this dust heap in the prairie. And furthermore... Yes, sir? I want a ruling, Judge Tobin, now. We'll have to release him, lad. Well, I want a drink. Wait. We also expect an apology from this, this fellow. You won't get it. Now, clear up. Now, Wyatt. Look, you've already turned them loose. That's enough. Now, you can write anything your editors tell you to write about General Sherman, but you keep your mouth shut as long as you're here. Is that a police order? That's advice, Mr. Wendell. Next time you sound off against General Sherman, I'm not going to stop the fight. You, sir, are an arrogant yahoo. You know, we're wrong. I'm sorry. No more fights. Well, thank you, Mr. Wendell. I'll see you around, I hope. Right. You've angered the New York Times and the Chicago Tribune. Perhaps I should try to make peace with the others, huh? Why? In their present mood, they'll blast poor Sherman. Heaven knows what they'll write about Dodge City. Well, you do what you, what you think is best, sir. All of us should feel guilty about Sherman. We blamed him for every failure Grant made in the White House. We owe Sherman. He helped us build this Western country. Well, keep your eyes peeled for trouble. Yes, sir. And if it comes, hit him hard. And Senator Forsyth and Mayor Kelly are cooking up a good one. Big parade led by the cowboy bands, speaker's platform on the plaza. He's got the whole shebang of politics. All the deputies turn on? Yeah. Go see the sheriff. We'll need his boys, too. Why, you figure there's going to be a fight? Colonel Bankhead's in town. Ooh. Twelve years since the war ended. Lee was the greatest general, of course, but Sherman was great, too. And he can't even visit a little cow town in the middle of Kansas without running into a great, big, nasty hullabaloo.
And I want you men to check your guns. No use having a run in with this man or up until the right time comes. You just circulate around and gather some information. We need to know how many bummers old Comp Sherman is bringing with him. Then you report back to me at noon and we'll see then what we have to do. Peace, friends. We will march to the plaza and let our brethren rally to us. Hold on. What here got that sign? Ah, peace, friend. Read the sign and join our march. You old fool, you. Calling General Sherman a butcher. Well, you give me that order. All right, right, young man. Hands Just a moment, oh, Doctor. Oh. Are you sorry of this, Mr. Murphy? But they got to stop calling Uncle Billy Sherman names. Just read it. I've already read it. All these men are under arrest. Take them away. All right. Come on, come on. Put us in jail. The truth will go marching on. The truth yeah, will go marching on. You ladies, please go inside, please. Oh. Now, come on. All of you, get going. This way, sir. I'll make you a deal, Mr. Herb. A deal, huh? I know some men that are going to try and kill General Sherman. Yeah? I heard him talking. Outside the Texas house. All right, what's the deal? You fix it for me and Sophie to meet the general. I guess you heard Colonel Bankhead giving the rebel yell, huh? Yeah. Well, that's all right. The deal still stands. I'll do what I can. Gosh, thanks, Mr. Earp. No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You go home, wash out your ears, and put on a coat and tie. Yes, sir. Howdy, Marshal. Join us? No, thank you. Howdy. Mm. Oh, howdy. Do uh, you mind if I uh, join you? Sit down. I, uh, I don't suppose I could uh, persuade you to show a little gratitude. And what thanks do I owe you, mister? None. But you owe General Sherman. I owe him a bullet. When the bloody shirts wanted to put Mr. Davis and General Lee in prison, who stopped them? The South, sir. Grant and Sherman. They said they'd resign their commissions if the terms of the parole were violated. And who burnt Atlanta and Columbia, South Carolina? Sherman! Well, I tried. Good work, Marshal. Arresting those crackpots with a sign. Yeah. What time is the General Sherman expected? About three. I figured to have a committee on the North Trace to meet the General. My suggestion is that you and the Sheriff head the committee. How many soldiers does the General have with him? About four or six. He uses Doherty wagons on the prairie, you know. Well, I don't like any of this. Oh, what? Well, come on in, Mr. Bates. I want you to hear what I have to say. Something gone wrong? This whole thing can turn into a big shooting match. You scared of old man Bankhead? Yes. Judge, we've got enough Union men to drive out every single Johnny Reb in an hour. Oh, now I think you're both exaggerating. I know Colonel Bankhead, and I can get his word to keep his people in order. I already tried that, Judge. Well, if he won't give his word, throw him in jail. What's got into you, Wyatt? I guess I'm ashamed of us all. Uh, you certain there's going to be trouble? Mr. Bates, there are only two people in Dodge who want to welcome General Sherman with completely honest motives. You're thinking about the Santa Fe. Mayor Kelly was a Union soldier. He's worried about the votes. The judge is worried about what the Eastern newspapers are going to say. And, well, I can't rightly welcome the the general, because I'm worried about a riot. Stupid talk. I'll hear no more of it. And I'll lay down the law to Colonel Bankhead. And Wyatt, you put a tighter rein on that imagination of yours. What do you want me to do, Wyatt? Well, Mr. Bates, I sure wish you'd pull the general special train into the siding east of town. 
Not let the general come in to dodge at all? Well, that's up to him to decide. If he wants a hero's welcome, he can always back the train into the depot. All right. If you'll explain it to him, I wouldn't dare. I don't relish the job myself, but... Well, I owe General Sherman. My two brothers served with him. Colonel. Sir? How far is it to Dodge City? Uh, about six miles, General. Well, I don't think I can face another fool reception without losing my temper. You ride ahead into town and ask the Santa Fe people if they can't board the train somewhere out here. Sir, they'll be counting on your visit. Colonel, you get me out of this. Now, General. Travelers headed toward us. I'd better check them out. Newspaper men, I'll bet. No interviews. If they get sassy, arrest them. Yes, sir. I'm Marshal Wyatt Earp from Dodge City. This is Miss Sophie. Master Lincoln Hanson. We're in a hurry, sir. I suggest that you pass on. Oh. Oh. Colonel! Whoa! Oh, darn it! That's him! Link, you come back Link, here! Link, come back here! Hello, Sonny! Don't you go in a Dodge, General. There's a lot of Johnny Rebs. I know the whole story. That'll do. General, sir, I'm Marshal Wyatt Earp of Dodge City. May I present Sophie Hanson. She's worried about her young man, sir, Corporal Jones. He's in General Howard's detachment. I haven't heard from him for almost seven weeks, General. We'll find out, miss. Colonel? Sir? Get some information from this young lady. Then we'll telegraph our people at Helena and get a report. Thank you, sir. Yes, Thank you. It's my pleasure, miss. All right, Marshal. What's all this about Johnny Rebs? Well, I thought they surrendered, son. <laughs> and I warn you, gentlemen, we're going to open fire the minute that blue-bellied killer enters this town. None of you'll be alive long enough to do that. And believe me, gentlemen, I mean what I say. The law's on our side, Colonel Bankhead. So you see, sir, the uh, decision is up to you. Now, if you'd like to come into Dodge City, I'll need about a half an hour to disarm the Southerners. Hmm. What about those friends of the American Indian? Well, I'm afraid you'll have to handle them, sir, and also the newspaper correspondence. Mm. How many welcoming speeches? Well, sir... Mayor Kelly's good for an hour, Judge Tobin another half hour, and Senator Forsyth... Mm. Link! Yes, sir? I'm not going into Dodge. What do you think would be a nice, polite excuse? Dodge ain't big enough for you, General Sherman. I'd write him a letter and tell him they're a fiddling little town. <laughs> Link, Hanson, children should be seen and not heard. You come down from there. But the general asked me. That's right, I did. <laughs> Good luck, son. Bye, General. Bye. -bye. <laughs> well, how would you put it, Marshal? Well, sir, I'd e even be less polite than Link. I wouldn't say anything at all. Well, I'll have to send him a telegram of regret. You know, Chief Joseph will be rounded up pretty soon, and then the West will be opened up all the way to the Pacific. But how do you open up the human mind and spirit? Well, you pray, I guess. Keep on praying. I started that some time ago. Looks like it's going to be a long job. I hope you'll put your guns away as soon as you can, Marshal. It won't be too many years now, sir. The big country with small people, all of us. I hope our Lord will be patient. Well, 
Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told. Long may his story be His younger brother Morgan and older brother Virgil were now to play more active roles in his life. Later in Tombstone, they fought side by side against hoodlums who called themselves cowboys. But to Virgil Earp, Wyatt was just his younger brother who had to be protected from bad men and bad women. And Larry's family doesn't approve of me. They wouldn't approve of any divorcee. A grass widow just naturally has to be immoral. That's old fashioned. Divorce wasn't your fault. Your husband was a drunkard and he deserted you. All that happened back in Illinois 50 years ago, it seems like. You've told all this to Larry Herrick, haven't you? Of course. And I think he believes me, but his family doesn't. I can just hear his mother talk. She's just Susan Dodd from little old Monmouth, Illinois, and nobody from nowhere. Well, they better not let me hear them say that. Us Serbs are from Monmouth, too, you know. Look, if Larry's uh, family's going to give you a lot of trouble, why don't you just tell Larry to find himself another gal? I'm afraid I'm in love with him. Real bad, huh? Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think this is the time to show it. What do you mean? Well, you're going to have to help him make up his mind about you. You're going to make him a little jealous. Jealous? Sure. You go out with me one evening, you go out with Mr. Masters in the next. You're very sweet, Wyatt, but I can't play the flirt. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> you found me out. <laughs> oh! Hey, ain't you the one put our girlfriends off last trip? And made them walk a mile into town. He sure is. Climb down. And what's this left? That's her. Looks like her. Wearing a mustache. Let's go find out. Howdy, Marshal. Howdy. You better check those guns. Oh, yes. Check guns. Right away. Yes, sir, Marshal. Come on, sir. Uh, thank you, Marshal. <laughs> My little brother seems to have things here well in hand. He sure has, Mr. Earp. I wouldn't say he's your little brother. He's as big as you are. Well, I'll have to be careful then. Little brother might just shoot my ears off. Yeah, he might. Virgil! Hello, oh, Virgil! Bat Masterson? <laughs> yeah, I grew up. Well, White's got your room across from his over at the Dodge House. Good. He'd have come to meet you himself, but there's a shooting at the Long Branch. Hey, Bat, I'm glad you're here. I want to ask your advice about something. Uh, it's a family matter. Oh? I understand Susan Pritchett's in town. What's well, Susan Dodd now? She took back her maiden name. Oh? Hey, an old married man like you interested in Miss Susan? Why, no, Bat, it's nothing like that. I yeah. just... No, drunks. I might hit a horse. Can 
and Wyatt make those barkeeps ration their whiskey? Well, he tries. Wyatt ain't drinking. Oh, about two quarts a day. Two quarts? Milk. I guess I asked for that. <laughs> Here it is, the mayor's office. Well, this is where she works, according to Larry. Yes, gentlemen? Are you Miss Susan Dodd? That's right. I'm Larry's cousin, Mel, and this is his uncle, Webb Herrick. How do you do? How do you do? Is Larry in town? No, ma'am. He's riding to the railhead. Be in town tomorrow sometime. Well, that's a relief. You both look so solemn, I thought, won't you sit down? No, thank you. Larry just asked us to drop by and pay our respects, ma'am. And uh, to tell you that he's in good health. Yes, in good health. You know what I think? I think Larry's folks ask you to look me over. Well, I'm five feet three inches tall. I weigh 112 pounds. I have brown hair and blue eyes. And I'm a divorcee. And right plain spoken. And if I need a character witness, I suggest you ask Marshal Earp. We came from the same town in Illinois. Whoa now, Miss Susan. Larry's already told the family he wants to marry you. Yes. We didn't apply for the duty. Family orders, ma'am. All right. You've looked me over. Now what? Well, we'll, we'll report back to Larry's folks. Don't bother. I've changed my mind. Huh? I'm going to tell Larry it's all off. I never butted into Wyatt's affairs before, but Susan did write people in Mama. She was setting her cap for him. They wrote our folks in San Bernardino, and, well, Mama told me off to look into this. Oh, no, you got it all wrong. She's engaged. Oh? Yeah, a fellow by the name of Larry Herrick. Fine Texas family. Hmm. Listen, I wouldn't say anything to Wyatt if I were you. Make him sore. Say anything? I've been worrying about what to say and how to say it all the way from California. Mr. Masterson, I will buy you a drink. Wait. You wear this. That's against the law, isn't it? You're an ERP. In Dodge City, you need a gun. Life insurance. <laughs> Howdy, Miss Susan. Are you awfully busy? Nope, I was just on my way over to the Dodge house to see if my big brother Virgil got in yet. Virgil's visiting? Mm-hmm. Oh, good. I've always liked Virgil and that sweet girl he married. Wyatt, I told Larry's cousin and his uncle I'm not going to marry him. You did? The two of them came to look me over. Well, some people are stupid about family pride. You think I did right? Miss Susan, if Larry is any kind of a man at all, he won't pay any attention to the Herrick's family prattle. I still say, why couldn't we have fallen in love? Well, I love you. Ah. That's a do. Love you like a big brother. The Herricks? Larry's kinfolk. Watch yourself. Since when did Wyatt Earp start wearing a mustache? That ain't Wyatt. Almost fooled me. Fooled me, too. It's his brother Virgil. Yeah, uh, he's joshing. Come on. Marshal Earp? No, sir. Barkeep was right. You're his brother Virgil, huh? Correct. You, sir? Webb Harry. This is Mel Harry. Howdy. Howdy. You know Bat Masterson? Sure. Hello, Bat. Hello. Join us in a drink? I think not. You and Wyatt have been sparking Miss Dodd while Larry's away. Had any business of yours? No, no. I had some wrong ideas, too. Now, let's get this thing straightened out. The truth ain't in your brother, and maybe not in you. Now, don't you say that about Wyatt. Look out, Virgil! Hold it! 
Virgil. Yeah, I'm sorry. It had to be this kind of a welcome. My own fault. I shot him, Marshal. No, it wasn't his fault. Mel Eric called you a liar. Virgil clouded him, then Webb tried to draw. All right, all right, Mr. Masterson, you take care of him. We're going over to the office. I uh, guess I can trust you to come peacefully. Susan tried to be a good wife to Bud Pritchett, but he hit the bottle and ran off with another woman. Now, why, why should Susan be punished for that? Well, you can't change public opinion overnight. But you don't have to join it. You seem mighty riled, brother. Well, of course I'm riled. Webb and Mel badgered Susan into calling off her engagement. Now, where does that leave Susan? Maybe she'd like to marry you. What? Virgil, did the folks send you here? I know what. Not exactly. See, I'm to meet Morgan in Omaha, and I just thought I'd stop by. No, and you say... didn't. You came here to save me from a wicked girl, didn't you? I did not. Well, hang it all, Wyatt. You and Morgan are my younger brothers. Oh, we're babies, huh? Look, Wyatt, let's just call off the war, huh? You can't call off the war. You gotta pass all the hotheads after us. That's my fault, I suppose. Yes, you shot Webb Herrick. Well, I was sticking up for you. That's just the point, Virgil. You don't have to stick up for me. I can fight my own fights. I'm a big boy now. Well, go ahead and marry Susan for all of me. Well, maybe I will. Now, look, Wyatt. I didn't want to come here in the first place, but... Mama was crying and Dad was glum, and, well, the pressure got to be too much for me, but... You go ahead and you be a big boy. Hold on, will you? Boy, oh, you talk to the idiot. I'm through. Now, stop that. Both of you have to stop it. There's going to be a little war when Larry Herrick gets into town. You want Virgil caught in a gunfight all by his lonesome? No. Well, then tell him you're sorry and make him a deputy marshal. A deputy? Yeah, snap out of it, Deacon. We went through the same thing when Morgan was in town. Any Europe has to wear a star when he's around you. I'll talk to Virg. Virgil Earp, why I told me you were coming. Miss Susan, I'm sorry for all the trouble I caused. What's happened? Why well, I had to gun a fella. Name of Herrick. Not Larry. No, no, his, his Uncle Webb. Uh, the shoulder wound. Well, that is a relief. More trouble? I had a row with Wyatt. Oh, that doesn't mean anything. You are boys were always fighting, I remember. Uh, please. You in love with Wyatt? No. Then you ain't gonna marry. Why, he hasn't asked me. Well, what if he asked you? He wouldn't do that. And even if he did, there's Larry. I think I love him. But if Wyatt should ever ask me... Susan, you're a born flirt. I guess I am. Only you're in Dodge City now, and flirting can mean bloodshed here. You don't want that. Oh, no, Virgil. Just say the word and I'll leave town before Larry gets here. That wouldn't solve anything. I'm just asking you to make up your mind. It'll depend on what Larry says. His folks don't approve of me and Larry may not want me now. I think he'll want you. Just quit teasing Wyatt. Quit working on his sympathy. Does Wyatt feel sorry for me? Yeah. I wouldn't be happy with a man who pitied me. No, I don't think you would. All right, Virgil. No more flirting, I promise. Good girl. Thank you. Bye. Bye. It ain't Wyatt Earp that's mixed up with her. It's his brother, Virgil. And not only that, when Mel and Webb call Virgil on it, he slugged Mel and shot Webb. All right, mister. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about that no-good brother of yours. Married man carrying on. You're a liar. 
You want to fight it out with me or apologize to Virgil? We'll fight it out. Right here. Yeah, take off those guns. I'll be glad to, mister. Hey, wait a minute, fellas. Now, turn that out, will you? Come on. Hey, Jim, you know better than that. Mr. Masterson. No use breaking your knuckles. Touch that gun and I'll drop you. Hey, big brother. Aren't you getting uh, kind of old for fist fight? Well, that's gratitude for you. I save you from a beating and you talk smart. Hey, why don't you go on upstairs and put some arnica on your face? Well, thank you, Mr. Masterson. You know, you got here just in time. <laughs> What's that fight about, anyway? Well, that blabbermouth cowhan said that a certain young lady was your girl. Susan? You got in a fight with a Herrick's, didn't you? Yeah. Well, that's the way certain cowhands think. Here. You better put this on. Star? What for? Well, I had to give one to Morgan when he was here. It's open season on herbs. All right. Say, that cowhand that started the fight, was he a Herrick man? I don't know. That gossip about Susan and me must be all over town. Sure. You're a moral leper. That's not funny. I'm a happily married man. Hey, we got to set Larry Herrick straight. He'll be coming after me first. Come on in. Larry Herrick just got into town. Stopped over at the mayor's office. Oh. Well, let's wait and see if Miss Susan can do with Larry. I think he's in love with her and that he'll believe what she says. Now then, Larry, if you want to yell at me, we won't be interrupted by taxpayers. Have you been seeing Wyatt Earp? Of course. Bat Masterson? Two or three times. What about Virgil Earp? I talked to him once. Did you know him back in Illinois? Oh, Larry, don't be ridiculous. The Earps are old friends and Bat's just a kid. There have been two fights over you and my Uncle Webb got his shoulder smashed. <sighs> well, they weren't fighting over me. I heard different. I heard... Oh, sure, that I'm a liar and a no-good divorcee. And your folks told you to drop me cold. Well, I've had about enough of the Herricks. Susan, honey. Don't Susan honey me. I wouldn't marry you now for ten million dollars. Now get out of here. Then it's true. There's another man. Yes. Who is he? That's for you to find out. Isn't Virgil Earp married? That's none of your business. Now you get out of here. I'm going to make this my business. Larry, please. Check your gun. Sure. Did you talk to her? It's a married one, ain't it? Virgil. Did she admit that? No. But the main reason I know it's Virgil. She was ashamed to call him by name. Well, anyway, you found out in time. You got him, Larry. I'll help you. Hold on, hold on. Just sit down. I ain't satisfied it is, Virgil. I'm going to ask him point blank and right to his face. We already had one fight with him, Uncle Webb. 
I won't be armed this time. You're taking a big chance leaving your brother alone at the hotel. I want to wait and hear from Miss Susan before we mount the guard. We'd look awful silly, wouldn't we, if Susan has decided to run off to Texas with Larry Herrick? Susan. You know, I used to be the setup for pretty women. You're the easy mark now. Well, I feel sorry for all women, Mr. Masterson. Good Lord gave him a tough row to hoe. Amen, Deacon. Amen. What? Webb Herrick, Mr. Earp. I'm not armed. Sorry to doubt your word, Mr. Herrick. Sit down. Well? Larry thinks you're Susan's lover. I think Wyatt is the man. Is that so? Wyatt has his deputies in Bat Masterson. I doubt if Larry'd have the sand to go after him. But he and the boys had sure gun you. I suppose it's no use trying to convince you that Susan is a decent girl. A divorcee? Huh. I'm giving you a chance to name Wyatt. My brother is not involved with Susan. Meaning you are? You know, if he wants to gun somebody, Mr. Herrick, then I'm his man. All right. You deserve killing. And I tried to make Larry be sensible, but he's crazy jealous. He must be to be going after Virgil. Now you stay here. You might see something you won't want to watch. Your men are wearing guns. Now you throw them down and make a fight. It's your brother we want. He's admitted he's the man. Why don't you keep out of this? For you. Well, big brother, at least you didn't kill him. Your poor hand. Those herbs, they never were anything but nasty, brawling hoodlums. We're going straight to Dr. McCarty. You should be ashamed. <laughs> Here you go, Jonesy. You give my best to Morgan, huh? I will. Now, Wyatt, will you promise me to quit feeling sorry for women? <laughs> I'll do that, big brother. And when you get to uh, Omaha, you write mother and tell her that I'm... I'm safe. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Wyatt. Right. Have a good trip. Oh, Wyatt. the country, the old wild west country, he made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold, long live 
his fame and long live his glory and long may his story be told. Quiet Earth, quiet Earth, brave, courageous and bold. Long live his fame and long live his glory and long may his story be told. Long may his story be Shoot the same old rawhide out here in the middle of the street. I'll buy you a new shirt. City without killing a man. Bat Masterson, Doc Holliday, and many other friends warned Wyatt that shooting to disable rather than to kill was quixotic nonsense. Gunfighters began to count on Wyatt's determination to spare their lives, and Bat, who was devoted to Marshal Earp, made one last attempt to change Wyatt's thinking. Now, you've been in danger in your own life to an increased extent lately. Dodge City needs you. Look. Silence. I've talked this over with Judge Tobin and the council. Herewith, I am issuing you an executive order. Read it. Yes, sir. It'll save your life, Wyatt. It's not on our account. Gunslingers are making a play against you because, well, they figure the worst they're going to get is a bullet in the arm. Admit we're right now. You're half right. Half right, he says. Now, next time a hoodlum goes for a gun, you shoot to kill. I've been thinking about this for a long time. I did put Mr. Masterson in danger this morning, and at one time or the other, I've let each of you into trouble. Your Honor, I'm promising to shoot to kill in any gunfight which involves my deputies. No, that's not the order. The order expressly states... Mr. Kelly, what I do when I'm alone and some man draws a gun on me is between me and my conscience. Now, if you want me to quit, I'll quit. Quit? There's no quitting you'll do. I'll have the council fired. Now, I'm still marshal for a half hour or so, so you men get back on patrol. Kelly lost his temper. Break it up. We didn't figure on... All right, all right. Now, get out of here, will you? Now, what's behind all this? You want some killer to take life off your hands? You never really did explain yourself, not to any of us. I've explained it. I've explained it to all of you. When? I've said that I'm not going to kill unless it's in self-defense. I've never been absolutely certain in any gunfight that killing was necessary. Now, do I speak plain enough? No, sir, you don't. I've been in gunfights, too. It was him or me, and I knew it. Yes. You knew it was you or Sergeant King. Have I blamed you for that? No, sir. 
Now, what's the difference, Mr. Masterson? You were certain that you had to kill, so you shot for the heart. Well, I've never been certain in any gunfight, so I've shot to cripple. And the proof of my method is that I'm still alive, and so are a lot of men that I might have killed. Well, there'll come a time, Wyatt. Don't stall around with us, Hoyt. You're wanted in Texas for stealing a ranch payroll. You've been indicted for it. Take our proposition. We'll get that indictment thrown out. Gun and Wyatt Earp. Some deal. It's easy. If you miss, he'll only wound you. He hasn't killed anyone all the time. He's been a peace officer. I don't know. He's coming a lot on Earp. Still in all for $1,500. Take the money and head for Dodge. Don't take it, and the Rangers will be heading you back to Texas. Where are you thought it's going to be? Near enough to send you to prison if you try to run out on us. Seem like I got much choice. How much time you allow him for the job? Would be reasonable. Gotta study your catch him alone. Well, that's the idea. Now get started. Oh, and uh no double cross and clearing that indictment. If I got nerve enough to go against her, I can handle both of you. <laughs> mistreating horses. Marshal Herb must be strict. I'm Marshal Herb. Oh. Now, you've ridden that horse half to death. You go water and feed him. Yes, sir. Right away. Looks like a Texas boy. Looks worse than that to me. Texas car hands water and feed their horse before they head to the bar. I'll keep an eye on them. Well, that's just the point I've been trying to make. The tail end of the cattle drive always brings a lot of scum into town. Looks like we have a couple of dry glasses. Hey, bring us another bottle of champagne. Gee. You must have hit the faro games for a lot of money. I got a big cattle spread below the Cimarron. Don't need a gamble. But, um, girls are kind of necessary, huh? Money is necessary, too. How come you're so interested in Wyatt Earp? I'm on the town council at Langley. Our marshal quit, so we got to hire a new one. Langley couldn't pay Mr. Earp enough. Oh, not after hiring him. Just want to study his methods. Does he, um... Ever patrol this part of town? Are you sure. Every night. All by himself? Sometimes. Why don't you ask Mr. Earp? He's a nice, polite fellow. It's an idea. I'll do that. But in the meantime, let's drink up. And uh, you can tell me about your methods. <laughs> Well, he deserved it. Using spurs. Come on, man. You're all right. Are you hurt, mister? Oh, it's all right. Get me a wet cloth, quick. Just 
fight at Madigan Saloon. He was stopping a car and with spurs. I spoke to you about mistreating your horse this afternoon. We also have laws against mistreating cowhands. What's your name? John Smith. All right, lock him up. We'll see if the other man wants to prosecute. I need a doctor. Your deputy slugged me. There's a cut porcelain phenol solution on it. Yes, sir. Any more talk, you will need a doctor. Marshal Earp. Howdy, Miss Daisy. Did you lock that man up? Yes, I did. Good. I hope you keep him in jail. He's real mean. Why don't you sit down and tell me about it, huh? He was asking me all kinds of questions about you. I mean, where you patrolled, and if you went alone. Things like that. Go on. I think he's planning a robbery or something. But it's only a hunch, Mr. Earp. Well, thank you for the tip. You ought to keep that man in jail. He's a killer. Well, we'll run the posters on him. Are you uh, going back to Madigan Saloon? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm headed that way myself. Come on, I'll walk you. Just because Mr. Larkin didn't prosecute, don't act so cocky. Thanks for the kind advice. It's not advice, it's a warning. I think you're on the run, Mr. John Smith. We didn't find any poster on you, but... One may come along. If I were you, I'd get out of Dodge. Any losses, I gotta listen to your guff. Now you got two fish and you got two guns. You can make it a fight either way. Later. Some sleep. Uh, the fella's still in town. Mm -hmm. I yeah. thought he would be. He was drinking up some courage at the Long Branch about a half hour ago. If you don't mind, sir, I'll make the patrol with you. All right. If you uh, checked the afternoon mail, did you? Mail? No, I plumb forgot it. You better check it. You might find a wanted poster on our friend. And you can join me over in the plaza. In the meantime, I'll just uh, check to see that nobody busted into the theater and stole chairs. All right, I'll see you in ten minutes. George Hoyt. Yes. Who hired you to kill Marshal Earp? Fifteen hundred dollars. Tell me their names. He's dead. Dead? No, he's faking. You tell me.
I know how you feel, Wyatt. Four inches higher and he'd have been all right. It's too bad. I aimed for the shoulder that the horse reared. You deserved it. He tried to kill you for pay. You talk to him. Get some sense into his head. You're not helping, Bat. I think you better leave. All right. But you better give him some medicine or something. Might have been him laying there. Make him think about that. Well, there's a fight with guns. Someone's likely to get killed. You've been lucky, Wyatt. And foolish, too. I patched up many men who tried to kill you. Hoyt was ignorant and stupid to try a thing like that. Gunfighters are all ignorant and stupid. But human beings, Doc. With innocent folks who, who love them. It just wasn't necessary. I, I could have uh, chased him on horseback, caught him and put him in jail. This was an accident, Wyatt. But sooner or later, you're going to have to shoot to kill. Deliberately. You know that. I guess so. Wyatt, people die in my care. Most of them were beyond medical help. A few may have died because they didn't have the drugs or instruments in hand to save them. But I do my best. Yeah. Every doctor has to harden himself to death. If he can't, he should quit medicine. That's right. Thank you, Doc. Tell Mayor Kelly. You tell him. You and Mr. Masters can take over. How long are you figuring on being away? I don't know. Got a few things to think about. We should know how to reach you. Well, the only clue I have to Hoyt's background is the Four Corners Roadhouse. I found a bar slip in his pocket. I'll be heading there first. Well, Wyatt, we may need you around here real bad. You and Mr. Masterson can handle things. You tell Mayor Kelly that I had to take a leave of absence. If he gets sore and fires me, good. That'll save me the trouble of making up my mind. Good luck. Leaving town? He's packed heavy for the trail, Mr. Leonard. Killed a Texan. So now he's scared. Pete, you better go tell the Big T outfit. They're capped west of Fort Dodge, about two miles. Okay. Ah, uh, tomorrow will be a busy day. Herb can do without Dodge. But I don't think this town will get along so well without Herb. <laughs> Coffee? Nope. 
It's on the house. Thank you. You in the cattle business? Well, I'm associated with it. I, mean, I know a lot of cowhands. Looking for one right now. A fellow by the name of George Hoyt. Oh, that punk. Friend of yours? No. You're lucky. He got paid for some cattle the day before yesterday and skinned out, owing me a bar bill of $2.80, the cheap four-flusher. Is Hoyt a Texas man? Him? Nah. He come from an orphanage in Indiana someplace. He got drunk in here one night and told me his life story. Every cow hand likes to brag he's from Texas. Why are you looking for Hoyt? I uh, have some money belonging to him. I thought maybe he might have had a family. Had a family? Is he dead? Yeah. Uh, how much did you, did you say, Georgia? 280. I don't get this, friend. Are you a lawyer settling Hoyt's estate? One, two, half, quarter, and That's the big T outfit. Looks like the. Big T, Mr. Mullins, they're going to shoot up Dodge. <laughs> shoot up Dodge. And Marshal Hoyt will have their pants thrown in jail before they can fire ten shots. Rips that good, huh? That's what everybody tells me. If I could leave this place, I'd ride into Dodge just to see a club of Tom Leonard and his boys. Thank you for the coffee. I'll see you again soon. Sure. All right. sent you, huh? Yes, sir. There's going to be trouble in town. You shouldn't have left Mr. Massis and he'll need you. Now go on and get back there. No, sir, not without you. I'm tired, Hal. I'm sick and tired. I know, White. We all are. It's no good job being a walking target every day, but... Me, I... I hate to get out of bed in the morning. Sometimes I have to smoke before I reach for my gun belt. It's a filthy, brutal job. It sure is. But somebody's got to do it. You know, bad, he'll, he'll lose his temper. So will Kelly. He'll get boxed in some tight corner. There's going to be quite a few burials in town tomorrow. Sneak through 4th Street. Cut them off. I'll try for Leonard. I'm sniping at him. I'm going to hit him from the window. I want Kelly and Masterson and the other go split. I'll let him have it.
You didn't kill him. No, Mr. Masterson. It wasn't necessary. Thanks for coming back, Wyatt. You blessed chicken-hearted fool. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Marshal Earp's time, there were Indian wars and cattle wars, and a steady brawling with 45s among bad-tempered cowhands. But the deadliest fighting on the frontier of 1879 usually started with a dispute between two towns for the honor of being designated the county seat. Dodge City had been named capital of Ford County, Kansas, but Fort Dodge, only six miles away, asked why should a wicked town like Dodge be the county seat? Besides, the residents of Fort Dodge were desperate for another reason. There you have it, in black and white. Pooh, Washington's always changing its mind. The Army's got to economize. There just won't be nothing to Fort Dodge but a, a keep house party and a name. I thought you had this all fixed, Mr. Ranger. I'm surprised at you, Judge Franklin. My father did everything he could to keep this fort open. Now, there's no use squabbling over something that's finished and done with. I've called a meeting for this afternoon. You have some new idea, Taki? Just come to the meeting. All right, I will. And I say Fort Dodge should be the county seat. Instead, we've let Dodge City hold squatters' rights. The people of Ford County never did vote to make that miserable town their capital. Are you going to let Dodge City get away with calling itself the high monkey monk town of our county? Good, good. We'll ask the governor to hold an honest election. You head the delegation, Judge Franklin. Thank you, Mr. Granger. I'll do just that. Mm. Collect as many more signatures for the governor as you can before the stage leaves. And don't talk to any Dodge City men. Judge Franklin knows that. <laughs> yes, Chicky? I know Wyatt Earp. Him? He's hand in glove with Kelly and Judge Tobin. You keep out of it, Edna. A political fight's no place for you. And if we don't win it, Fort Dodge will be a ghost city and we'll have to move on. Soldiers headed this way. Go wait on them. You wait on them. I'm going to Dodge City. Edna, I forbid you having anything to do with Wyatt Earp. You've made eyes at him every time we went over there. You're old enough to have some pride. Pride? We're broke and we're in debt. And I knew Tarky Granger in the Army. He's a born politician. Hold on, Jim. You're assuming that he'll try to get a special election. What else? They can't just build a courthouse at Fort Dodge and say, we're the county seat. Am I right now, Wyatt? Yes, sir. You hear Wyatt? He knows it'll be a political play. But I can't head him off in Topeka. The governor knows I backed Milliken in the primary. Oh, you 
You're the best man we've got, sir. There's only a quarter of an hour to catch that train. Oh, all right. Howdy, Miss Edna. Guess they heard about it in Dodge. Yeah, they sure did. What do you think? Well, if, uh, if they want to call a special election, they sure can do it. Does that mean you're against us? Well, Miss Edna, I seldom mess around in politics. Papa's right, you know. Dodge City isn't morally fit to be capital of Ford County. Mm. A dirty, nasty, wicked town. That's the truth, and you know it. What do people say later on? Fort Dodge can start with a clean slate. This place is a disgrace to Kansas. Miss Edna. Yes, sir? Did your daddy send you over here? Of course not. He tried to stop me. Why'd you come? Pa says I got a girly crush on you. But what? that's not why I came. We have to find out what Dodge City folks plan to do about the election. Gotta know so we can plan our campaign. <laughs> What's funny? Well, I don't see what's so funny. <laughs> well, uh, you're telling me the truth. You see, <laughs> politicians, they very seldom do that. We're not politicians. We're home folk. <laughs> All right, no more joking. Uh, Miss Edna, in my opinion, I think Fort Dodge has a very good chance of becoming the county seat. There. But not if you try any shenanigans. No, it's got to be strictly honest. Do you think we cheat? Well, not you, Miss Edna, but, well, those political fellas, uh, you warn your daddy, hmm? Yes, sir. I'll tell Papa. Wyatt, won't you be on our side? No, I'm gonna have to stick with Dodge. Why? It's kind of simple, Miss Edna. If Dodge City is too wicked to become the county seat, it's kind of my fault because, uh, well, they hired me to clean up this town. Papa will win you over. And if he can't, I'll sure try. Now, don't you laugh. I can be girly, girly. <laughs> no, no, you, you stay just the way you are, huh? <laughs> and, and look, let's, let's both stay out of politics, huh? Now, you go on, scoot home. Smaller Dunbar. This is Dave Rickard. Howdy. Howdy. We both kind of fool with politics in Dodge. Just the men I want to see. Come inside. Well, the first thing we've got to do is take them records from Keller's office. Possession is nine tenths of the law. Besides, Keller's got a list of the voters. Stealing records from now on. We'll take care of it. This is frontier politics, Mr. Granger. You can't win the election without the list of registered voters. We have to add a lot of cow hands and maybe some dead men. I don't like it. Nobody likes it. The point is, do you want Fort Dodge to be a ghost town or the county seat? You can swing a couple of hundred votes from below the line in Dodge, but that won't be enough, Mr. Granger. All the voters outside of Dodge, the rest of Ford County. Still not enough. We thought you wanted to win this election, but I guess we're wasting our time. Come on, Dave. Uh, no, wait. Kelly and his people have cut a few corners. I reckon we'll have to do the same thing. Now you're talking. Politics, Mr. Granger, politics. Well, let's drink to it. Dave, keep an eye on the front door. I'll break in the back. Right. Does that, uh, Hal? See that these get out first thing in the morning, will you? Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to turn in. You and Hank split the dog watch, right? Sure is quiet tonight, isn't it? That's the way I like it. Yeah. There's a man standing in front of Mayor Kelly's office. The wagon just turned the corner. I'll take a look. No. 
Let's give him time. Let's go out the back door. to receive this. Look at that. Robbed. Stolen. All cleaned out. All the city and the county records. Gone. Look at it. Just look at it. I know, Mr. Mayor. You know? What do you mean, you know? Well, Hal and I saw the whole thing last night. You saw it? And you let him get away with it? Yes, sir. Why on earth would you... Mr. Kelly, Hal trailed him to Granger's store at Fort Dodge. Tarky Granger. Fort Dodge. It's a dirty political trick. Well, why are you wasting time? Get a posse and hit them quick. Shoot them down. Crack their skulls. But you get those records. That's an official order. All right. If you want Fort Dodge to win. I don't want him in jail. I... What is this now? Fort Dodge winning. Well, they made a bad move, Your Honor. Next, they'll try to doctor the voting books. Then we just let them, huh? Mm -hmm. And then we let them stuff the ballot boxes. Huh. Oh. And then we nab them, huh? Mm -hmm. I'll teach them to get into a political fight with Jim Kelly. Well, what if they hide the books? Well, excuse me, Watt. Miss Edna Granger wants to see you at the Dodge House. Thank you. Miss Granger might give us an insurance policy on those books. No, I... I... Now, Mayor... Lord, they didn't get everything. Oh. It's a bad, nasty mess, Judge Tobin. What luck did you have in Topeka? None. The governor's ordered a special election for Saturday. Nah. They'll steal it, just like they stole the books. Dodge City outnumbers them five to one, Jim. Not with Smiley Dunbar and those hoodlum votes below the line. They'll all go to Granger and his crowd. Civic pride will keep them from voting to change the county seat. Civic pride, is it? They want a wide open town and no marshal like Wyatt. They'll move to Fort Dodge lock, stock, and barrel. Well, now, how's Miss Edna and our insurance policy? He's talking about Mr. Granger's daughter, Judge. She doesn't favor robbery. Hm. I suppose she'd be turning against her own father. No, sir. If her father's involved, she'll try to save him. Any action in Topeka, sir? Against us. The whole county will have to vote. Saturday. Well, that's short notice. Well, get your high silk hat, Mr. Mayor. We better start campaigning. <laughs> Two 
of the county until Friday night. Then make your big speech and dodge. Kelly and Herb are too quiet. Well, what have they got to shout about? It's too good to be true. Well, you asked Dave. There wasn't a Johnny Law in sight. We're in, Mr. Granger. Those county records we got hold the election. Yeah, yes, I, I reckon. Edna, perhaps you'd better. Sure. Howdy, Miss Edna. You see Earp? Yes. Why, it was kind of worried. Seems someone broke into the mayor's office last night. Took all their record books. That's no crime. It's got to be something valuable. Breaking into a place is a crime. Forget it, Chicky. Let Earp worry. He's being paid for that. Now you go into the store and pack me some grub. I'm hitting the speaking trail for votes. How long? Be back Saturday morning. That's election day. And the fort's polling place will be here. I'll need the key to the safe, won't I? Key? No. No. There's money enough for change in the cash drawer. All right, Papa. You always left the key with me before. That's why I asked. And I say to you, my friends, that Dodge City was ordained by the good Lord to be the metropolis of Ford County. If the seat of county government is moved to Fort Dodge, grass will grow in the streets of our town. Yeah. If Fort Dodge wins the election, we'll soon have a bigger and a better Dodge City. Yeah. And we won't have Wyatt Earp as Marshal. Yeah. And we won't have Jim Kelly as mayor. Yeah. We won't have those three hypocrites, Tobin, Kelly, and Earp. Yeah. How's the record books in his safe? He wouldn't trust me with the key, but I know how to get into it. When are you coming over? Tomorrow after the election. Why not today, right now? I want the ballot box. Well, that's not fair. You could get Papa into worse trouble. No, we can save you, Papa. If, if you'll help. Is that a promise? Yeah. Thanks, Wyatt. I'm still in love. Wow. First time I've ever heard of a mourner's bench before the election. Granger got the crowds here and all over the county. Looks bad, Wyatt. They don't even have to steal this election. Well, Smiley Dunbar and his crowd wouldn't be happy unless they stole it. Hal, let's just make sure that all our votes are honest, huh? Why? You're not suggesting that I would stoop to dirty politics. Well, it is a big temptation, Your Honor. Don't josh him, Wyatt. If they win, Dodge City will be the ghost town. I'm sorry. Oh, Hal, I'll need ten special deputies tomorrow. Yes, sir. Ten? You'll need two dozen just to guard the polling place at the fort. Uh, Judge, I think you and Mr. Kelly are plum tuckered out. Now, why don't you just let me handle the police work, huh? He's right, Jim. Well, just tell us one thing. Are you going to get back the county records? Yes, sir. And the Fort Dodge ballot box, too. Mm -hmm. It's in your hands, Wyatt. Come along, Jim. Busy day tomorrow. Now, don't miss, Wyatt. It means your job and my job and the finish of Dodge City. Now, the polls close at 7. That gives us a half an hour of daylight. I'm going into Fort Dodge with the peddler's wagon and the fastest team of quarter horses the Chalk Beeson has. No posse? Yes. You leave town here with the boys at 7. If I get in any trouble, there'll be gunfire. You just head for the sound of guns. Jim Nolton. Friend, if you want to read the fine print, step inside. We're in a hurry. 
Howdy, Big T. Hi, Howdy, Judge. Judge. Hi, Judge. Glad you could make it. Just a moment, Judge. Are these men residents of Fort Dodge? They've been here all their lives. Sorry, but we need their names and registrations. Lock them in the storeroom, boys. We're busy with an election. Now, does anybody else have any suggestions? I've had enough. You can't do anything until Wyatt comes. He'd spoil the whole plan. How did I ever get into this? You wanted to save Fort Dodge and us. But the wrong politicians took over. Wyatt says it. Hey, Your Honor, give us a hand. We've got a couple Indians out here that won't vote unless you say it's all right. Very well. <laughs> About 900 votes for Fort Dodge. Open up the safe, Mayor Granger. Hey, what's the meaning of this? We're going to burn the county record books so they can't trace the phony votes. Well, that's stupid. If you win, you'll need the county tax records and city police reports. Who do you think's running this show? You or me? You're not going to burn these records. Take care of him, Dave. Stop it! You! You keep out of this. Lock him in the storeroom with the others. Leave those alone! Why, you little brat, sis. Why, you... Go lock the door to the store. But my father, he... He'll be all right. Go on. Take the ballot box out to the wagon. Down from there. I'm going with you. Well, we're going to have to make a run for it. Let's go. Come on. Out front and get the horses. Get behind those rocks. Come on. Keep your head down. Hey, reload that for me. Give me the Winchester. No need for it. I see you be coming any minute. The accused will please rise. Mr. Dunbar, Judge Franklin, Mr. Rickard, you're found guilty of election fraud and sentenced to two years in the state penitentiary. Mr. Granger? Yes, Judge? Your daughter cooperated with Marshal Earp, and you yourself tried to prevent the destruction of valuable records. The court sentences you to six months in jail, and will stipulate that you be paroled immediately. Adjourned? This way, You still here? Where's your dad? He went on over the hotel. 
I've been waiting for you. I wanted to thank you. I, uh, I think Judge Tobin is the one you want to thank. Him too. Wyatt, I don't suppose that you'd ever feel like marrying me. Uh, well, honey, uh, you see, I'm, I'm an old, old man, but, uh, well, if I was your age, you'd be the first girl I'd ask. Politician. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be. 